All right, all right. Hello. Mrs. Murica here. I'm going to help you out if you need a little extra help with some of those vocabulary words. The assignment asks you to define them in your own words and then to use something from Vickers versus Jeeves to use it in a sentence, okay? To show me that you understand what it means. So let's tackle the first one that is there for you. Liable. In a legal sense, to be liable means that you can be found legally responsible for something. Now, there's another way to use the word liable. It's if somebody like has a tendency to do something, like I'm liable to punch you in the face if you be talking bad about my mama. Now, the important thing to remember is that being liable is not the same thing as doing something on purpose. If someone is liable, they're responsible for something, but that doesn't mean that they had intent to do something. So if I'm texting and driving and I get in an accident, I may not have intended for anyone to get hurt, but I am liable because my actions made the car crash happen, okay? All right, next we have responsible party. If a person in a court of law is called the responsible party, it means, obviously, that they're the people who, at the end of the matter, at the end of the day, are responsible. So let's say that a 15-year-old, you know, takes the car and crashes it into a Dairy Queen or something that may or may not have happened in real life. The parents would be the responsible party or the owner of the car could be the responsible party and it kind of depends on the specific details but when someone is referred to in a case as the responsible party it means that they are the ones that hold the power in that situation now when we talk about the word negligence that's a little bit different than responsibility in that negligence is a failure to do something a failure to take appropriate action so in this case Jeeves is the one who is being sued for negligence, saying that he provided alcohol at a party or, or caused alcohol to be served, as the statute states, and didn't take proper care to find out what was happening to the drinkers of that alcohol after they left his apartment building. So he's being charged with negligence, a failure to take care of his partygoers. The party goers themselves in this case would be referred to as the third party persons. And that's the next uh, little deal on your vocabulary list. So when in a court of law, they mention third party persons, it's someone related to whatever negligence is being talked about or responsibility. So in this case, that would be Dane Nelson. Dane Nelson is the one who drove away from Rick Jeeves' party and the question, was he intoxicated, was he not intoxicated? That's one of the things that comes up. But he's the third party. So did Rick Jeeves negligently offer alcohol to an obviously intoxicated person, that intoxicated person being Dane Nelson, the third party? Plaintiff is a pretty easy one. We've been talking about that one since the beginning of the unit. So this is kind of just a reminder. The plaintiff is the person bringing the suit in a civil case. The plaintiff is mad. They're the one saying an injustice occurred and I need to be paid back or I need the dog back or the house or the you know plane or whatever it is that they're alleging was unjustly taken from them, their time, their reputation. So the plaintiff, files the suit. The plaintiff wants something in return for the way that they have been wronged. Whereas the defendant is saying, no, I don't think so. I don't need to, you know, be responsible for you falling off the ladder that you borrowed from me. That's not my fault. You're the one who fell off the ladder. It's your fault. So the defendant is in defense. They're saying no. I am not gonna be held responsible for that. And if it gets to the, the court, if it goes to actual court, then they are defending themselves. They're saying, no, I strongly disagree that I should be held responsible for this, so much so that I'm going to actually go to court with you. And the last word or phrase is out of court settlement. Oftentimes you will hear those words. It's, so this is what happens if a case doesn't go to court. Sometimes it's because there was an out of court settlement. And that means that the what would have been the plaintiff and would have been the defendant came to some kind of terms. 
maybe the ex-girlfriend ended up giving the ex-boyfriend the dog back instead of going to court to see who was going to get custody of the dog. Maybe they figured out, you know, who was going to pay for the rose bushes that were accidentally mowed over. All of those things can happen before an actual trial. And if they do and they come to some kind of agreement or they, they pay mediators to help them come to an agreement, then that's called an out of court settlement. They come to an agreement before they end up going to court.